three, two, one. Well, <laughs> is, that yours? is that your uh, stomach? Wow. Do you know how weird that was? It was like, that sounds that was right on cue. <laughs> Black Hey, Waggy, what, what are you doing? What are you growling at? What did it matter? Oreo and Black here are fighting. Oh, Oreo, are you being a bully? Oreo's just sitting there and Blackie's just <laughs> sitting there. See what's happening underneath you. They're just sitting looking at each Little other and Blackie's technical growling. difficulties with the kitty cats tonight. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> All right, take two. Oh. All right, so anyway. <clears throat> okay. Look at that. What is going on? She's laying right in her face. Who is? Face to face. Oreo is. Oh, Oreo. Come is on, Oreo. Necessary? Come on. Come on. You can find another place. She says, why do I have to find another place? Why doesn't she? <laughs> Blackie was. Oh, that, that was too funny. That just, felt very. She was, she was just like this, laying with Blackie, and Blackie's <laughs> paws like this. <laughs> Oreo's was going, what's wrong with you? Welcome back, guys. We got the cats taken care of. They were causing a little bit of trouble there. And hopefully this week, we're going to do good with each other. We're going to play well together <laughs> after <laughs> last week. Whew. Going back, we're on part two of David Platt's message. Was it called, Matt? It is, Why Jesus Died and How We Live, Love Made Known. Part two. Part two. All right. So we're going to head into that and just excited about that to dig into God's word, see what he's saying in his word, what it means, and how we can apply that to our lives. So let's go to prayer, check out the video, and then we'll come back and talk about it. You want to pray this time, Matt? Kind of put me on the spot there. <laughs> On video. You want to go for it? Really? You want to, hun? Heavenly Father, thank you for tonight. Thank you for a time that we have set apart to seek you, Lord, to seek first your kingdom. Lord God, I pray that you would open our hearts and open our minds to receive your word, to have a fresh revelation of who you are and who you want us to know you are and how we can love you and how we can trust you and how we can follow what it is that you have planned for your people and thank you for technology thank you for the opportunity that we can hear david platt all the way on the west coast while he's on the east coast just uh, thank you for that opportunity but lord god we realize that he is just a man and we are here to seek your word so we do pray for a fresh revelation of your word and of who you are and that we wouldn't just be hearers but that we would be doers of your word as we hear it lord and that as we hear it that we would be set free in jesus name amen Amen. Okay, let's get into the Word, see what uh, this teaching is this time. So you ready? As I discreetly had the paper of what the sermon name was. <laughs> All right, here we go. We'll see you guys on the discussion end. What'd you think, dude? That was really good. Like, I've never even, like, heard that, let alone think about the fact that Jesus didn't die for us or just for us. Like, I've never even heard that or thought of that at all. Yeah, I think to dovetail off of what he was saying, you know, it is important. You know, we talk about our world view, but, but also to take it down another step and think of it as a God-centered world view, which <clears throat> also brings into the fact that, you know, it all begins with God, that God created us. He's not here for us. We're here for him, which totally, it's a game changer. Mm -hmm. um, and then, of course, Jesus is also the game changer because as we are completely separated from God from by our sin and the lack of being able to propitiate it ourselves, um, 
you know, it's a total game changer that because, you know, I mean, like, the more you study, the more you realize that God being here on earth completely walks through everything that we do, although we'll never be perfect this side of heaven, but he shows us clearly that he knew why he was here, that he had a job to do, and he was totally focused. He, you know, he was completely that seek first the kingdom of heaven. He knew that he was here to explain that people needed propitiation and that he was that propitiation. And then he continues to intercede for us and continues to be that propitiation. So, yeah, it definitely... Um, changes your focus I think when you realize it is so easy and it seems so comical to say it's not all about us <laughs> mm-hmm. but the reality is <laughs> we're very good at turning it back to ourselves yeah <laughs> like I'm just thinking about that that I've been in church church my whole life and I've never heard that meaning I've never heard the true full gospel ever wow well, yeah. And I've been in church my whole life, so church has never taught me the full gospel. Ever. I've never heard that or even thought of that. Yeah, well, I mean, that makes me think about it because, the, I mean, you know, thinking about what the gospel is and everything and even in um, doing that gospel message video that I did not that long ago, um that the comment from Pastor Randy in New Jersey on that started getting me thinking. Actually, it was just before that where we gave our first message in the junior high about God's holiness and just really that that's the game change. That, that's, that's the first step coming to realize how God, holy God is and how perfect He is and how um, compared to him, I mean, it's just like night and day, light and darkness, mm-hmm. like David Plow was saying. And interesting that we wouldn't start the gospel with that, talking about God's holiness and how perfect he is and how he wouldn't be holy if he brought sin into his presence and accepted sin. That, And yeah, I mean kind of starting to see that too that there that like David Platt was talking about that easy gospel like just just ask Jesus into your heart and add him to your life and you're going to have this wonderful life yeah like in 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 the elementary thing I had I, what they taught me was the ABCs of Christ that it's just easy it's A B C like what how does that make sense but it's just uh, easy as one, two, three. Just an easy bake gospel. Yeah, which in, in the book I'm reading right now is talking about Jesus constantly calling us to count the cost. That it, it's, it's not going to be easy to follow him, but it's going to be totally worth it in the end for eternity. I mean, there's heaven or hell. And... And just coming to that understanding of God's holiness and then we wouldn't be demanding our rights or saying that we know better than God or that this is the way God should do things or God you're doing this wrong and how could how could how could God be doing that and and like he's saying uh, people ask how could God how could a loving God send people to hell and I mean it just answered the question right there his his love made a way for us to not have to go there thank you jesus yeah so him and him and the cross but yeah i'd I'd never like matt saying i'd never heard it put that way and actually when he first said it my thought was that like did he misspeak (laughs) when he said that yeah that Jesus died for God? Mm-hmm. He, he, did he misspeak? <laughs> it's kind of funny. I mean, 
But I mean, he, I mean, David Platt, he's he's an excellent um, Bible teacher, and what? and it's good that you know, thankfully God has given us His Word because as good as a teacher he is, like you said in your prayer, I believe that he's still just a man, and even Paul, the huge saint, apostle that wrote a third of the New Testament, even told, commended the Bereans for searching the scriptures daily to see if what he was teaching them was true. So thankfully, we don't have to take someone's opinion, someone's word on it, that we get to um, look at it ourselves. And I think that that's one of the interesting things that I was kind of thinking of too, is how important it is for us to be in the Word so that we know the truth because everybody's got an opinion, everybody's got an idea of what God should do or what's right or wrong and all that, but if we're not basing it on the truth, the Word of God, we're deceived and and and, and the other part about God's holiness, like, like the Word says there that whoever says he's without sin is a liar and the truth is not in him and just realizing how desperately in need we are of what Jesus did through his life, death, and resurrection and without that we would be condemned to hell and he, God would be just and right in doing that because that is the wages of sin is death for eternity, separation from him I thought it was interesting too what he was talking about is that you know as we walk in the light you know I think in Daniel it talks about shining the light in dark areas and that he sets up kings and deposes them you know God knows us so intimately in fact he sees things that we don't even see in ourselves and as mm -hmm. we do walk in the light and he shines the light on an area that maybe we've not wanted to look at or <laughs> you know are seeing for the first time only through his light only through his word yeah, do okay. we even see it and the more we walk with him the more we see like it's interesting because i think your word is a lamp into my feet and a light unto my path yeah i don't know if it's uh, a willingness to receive that conviction from the Holy Spirit or a willingness to see that sin and not want it or if our senses are more in tune because we're in the Word but it does seem like the closer you walk the more you confess does that make sense like like you see like it's kind of like, I think, when you first become a Christian, you're kind of like, okay, here's the big sins. Don't murder, don't look, you know what I mean? And all kind of those big things, but I think as oh, a Oh, I didn't kill anyone today. Woohoo, it's a good day. Good day. <laughs> but the, um, the closer we walk with him, you know, we see the things like selfishness, you know. I mean, we see the things like not speaking well of our brothers and sisters. We see the, um, you know, the thoughts maybe that came in that we wish didn't come in, or I don't know. I just see, I think we see things deeper the closer we walk. So I, I think that's interesting. Yeah, I think, you know, like that, the, your word is a lamp into my feet and a light into my path. Uh, scripture and thinking about that how if we're not in the Word of God how we're walking in darkness mm -hmm. we're like gambling playing Russian roulette with our re eternity and hoping our thoughts which are sinful because we've got our bent toward sinfulness mm -hmm. in our life and we're just gambling with what we're going to spend eternity if we're not in God's Word I'm going to go get the shik shooter really quick I'll be right back Trying to get it ready. <laughs> so it, yeah. I mean, how how important that is, and and the scripture that God's 
given us, you know, they de devoted themselves, they devoted themselves to the apostles' teaching, first and foremost in, in that list there. And which is awesome here, you know, list looking for uh, good Bible teachers that actually teach what God's Word says and what it means and how to apply that in our life. Not that he's the only one. <laughs> he's, he's not the yeah. only one, but how important that is and just thinking that, you know, I mean, uh, and, and thinking without, without really planning it or anything that God's led us to that scripture and God is leading us to devote ourselves to the apostles' teaching, devoting ourselves to prayer, which we do afterwards, which we did before, we do afterwards and in our own time and all that, and devoting yourselves to the breaking of bread, which we didn't do communion tonight, but we had a meal together and we had a an interesting um, spiritual conversation over dinner. Too. Yeah, we had the uh, breaking of spaghetti noodles. Yeah, and then the fellowship, you know, looking to get together with people in all these different areas and things like that and I think it's kind of cool how God's leading us in those things. That is cool. Yeah. <laughs> cool. Cool. Like, oh, we're having this conversation and Polar Bear and Blackie, Polar Bear's passed out and Blackie's taking a shower right in front of us. <laughs> Yeah, they're pretty relaxed. They're like, ooh, this light over here is really warm. and Yeah, they're like lizards. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're bask. Polar bear really needs to digest that. Really needs to get his food digested. I don't think he's basked in the light for a while. <laughs> yeah. All right, so would you want to lead us out in prayer, pray about our time, pray for them, and, sure. and all that? Okay. God, I pray that um, you will help that sermon, that uh, it will stick with us, that we'll remember it and we'll think on it all week, because it, cause in your word it says to meditate on your word, so I pray that we will do that, and I pray that you'll help us in our times of prayer, that we will pray about the things, we will talk to you about the things we want to talk about, and that we'll have a good week, and yeah, in your name, amen. Amen. All right, and we are very thankful for you guys to join us, and and this is just, I love this. I mean, this is just so cool, and it's so cool that we can share with, and and uh, hopefully you guys have some good discussions, time of prayer and all that. We're going to go into our time of prayer now, so we will see you on the next video. God bless you guys. Blackie, Blackie says bye. Oh, <laughs> looks like she had a question. <laughs> <laughs> what you says?